What's up guys, it's Nate Petrosky of Narrowway Homestead with the one and only Minion, or Lord Minion. He's got many titles. I've been homesteading here in the hills of West Virginia for three and a half years, and 2023 was probably the most productive year I've had so far. For those of you that don't know, the first year I was here focused on solar power along with rainwater collection. The storage building always existed. Well, it did after the first week I got here. I put it up to store all my stuff as well as be able to have a roof surface to collect rainwater off of. One of the new things this year as of about a month ago is I moved out of the camper that I was staying in. It's an ancient camper. It's really starting to fall apart in a bunch of different ways. This summer's project was half of that storage building, turning it into a living quarters or a place to live temporarily. And at some point there will be a house that goes up there. That's the more permanent plan, but I needed some time to actually plan and build it exactly the way I want to. And the camper was pretty obvious. It wasn't going to keep holding up as long as it was going to take to build a house. The other new thing this year is the outhouse. I started it last year off and on just building the basic framing and flooring structure. The entire thing is basically made out of recycled materials. Well, except for some stuff like door handles, but the inside pretty much have a toilet that goes to a pit. And then these other two are for liquids. But what's most notable about it is the ventilation system. On the back side of the outhouse, these go down into the pit and they pull the air out of it and it forces air down the toilet seat, out and up above the roof where the stink can just disappear. And that gives me negative pressure inside and you never really smell yourself go or smell anything with the pit at all. Because I'm on solar power, I don't just run electronics needlessly. So those fans are shut off most of the time, except when in use. And the fact that these are painted black usually means that the air inside these pipes gets hot from the sun and it just naturally slowly pulls air up out of there because hot air rises. And that naturally creates a vacuum, if you will, underneath or negative pressure in the pit. So the inside of the building itself should never smell. And as of, you know, four months of use, it's not smelling. That is a big upgrade from my other outhouse, which is a quarter mile that way, thrown up in a hurry early on. And it was obviously quite a trek every time you wanted to go use it. But I'm happy it's over there because it services the rest of the property. And it's not some eyesore that I built here initially in a hurry and that I have to tear down, figure out what to do with. It can sit there, stay functional. And I don't know, probably last 20 years just hanging out there. Um, but much better to have this one now. The other thing is more ducks. I didn't buy any. These were all hatched out of eggs all throughout the spring, summer, and even one into the fall. Six ducks we started out with. Now we've got 22. We had 27, I think, at the peak, but I have got this time of year right now, I've got a hawk issue. There's a red-tailed hawk or a couple red-tailed hawks hanging out around here, and I'm ending up keeping them in the coop a fair amount unless I'm out here and can actually just be here. Um, but I do have a plan to eventually not have to worry about hawks. Minion has been incredibly helpful with the birds of prey. He looks at the sky and he notices any birds pretty much before I do and he barks at them. But obviously I can't leave him out here. He's an 18 pound, well, 19 pound dog at the moment. Um, he just can't handle coyotes, foxes, and I don't think a hawk would really cause him an issue because he is a vicious little dog. But, <laughs> you know, it's just, I just can't leave him out here unsupervised. So I got him a little brother. He's over here, hanging out, taking it easy. This would be Aslan. Call him Az most of the time. What's up, Az? He is a seven month old Turkish Boz Shepherd. He's a livestock guardian dog. I've had him for right around a month. And we're getting ready to get rid of this stupid, stupid rope thing. He's already off leash about 12 hours a day right now. It's not going to be long and he's going to be never on it because he can't do his job like that. But he is almost 100 pounds as of the recording of this video. And at seven months old, that means he's going to be a lot bigger. I've wanted a livestock guardian dog for quite a while now, and I didn't get one because of the amount of time I wanted to put into training one. I had to make sure I had enough time to do it and we've been last 30 days or so working a lot he knows sit he knows leave it um he'll actually leave his food in his bowl 
and sit up and look at me, which is, in my opinion, really impressive for only if, only having him a month and him still being a puppy and extremely food motivated. But he's here to protect the ducks. He's just got to do some training, learn a lot of things from Minion about watching the sky, particularly for birds, but I'm sure he'll pick up on it. And of course, we still have Saber and Dagger, who usually refuse to be around for filming. But this is Saber, helping take care of mice, rodents, everything else. The first year I moved here, I had an incredible rodent problem, like within the first 30 days, I was putting this camper here, didn't have any cats. And the mice were bad, mice were everywhere out here. And now I'm at the point between these two cats that I really don't have a mouse problem. Dagger, it's so cool that you showed up for the video. I didn't think you were gonna show. What a good boy. We got Dagger and Saber, they're both brothers. They're both very different from being brothers, but that's cats for you. And of course, most of you that have been here for a while know I have an outdoor kitchen. There's food stored out here. Um, and I don't have a rodent problem out here. I regularly bait mouse traps and I haven't caught a mouse in a trap in probably about six months. So the cats are doing their job. I have 102 acres. I actively homestead on about two acres. The rest of it I want to keep wild. And so as long as they keep the pests and rodents down on this particular plot, I'm happy to let mice roam the other 100 acres. Although I'm sure they reach out a little bit into the woods, don't you? Yeah, you explore. All these changes took place and uh, even though it looks like it's been the main focus, my main focus this year has actually been to continue building the business I started. If you go to narrowwayhomestead.com, you'll know exactly what it is. I pretty much have a retail business. I love roasting my own coffee. I roast it all the time. Actually, I probably should today. Um, when, I, when I've got sunshine, I can roast coffee in my electric roaster in the outdoor kitchen. But I have beard care products, which if I had groomed my beard before this video, it might be more impressive and a much better sales pitch, but whatever, this is just an educational, <laughs> educational video. I have beard care products, coffee products, got some merch, I'm forever adding different things, got some reed diffusers, which are new this year. I've got more products in the works. Some people are incredibly disappointed to find out that I don't actively make all the products I sell, um, but obviously... I've got a ton of stuff going on and with social media, the sales always come in surges and I could never drop firewood splitting before winter to fulfill orders and then wonder why I'm cold in the winter. Like it just wouldn't work, but I am very, very dedicated to using small businesses with a good uh, work ethic, good customer service. And so they're personal friends of mine, the guy that does the roastery um, for all the coffee roasting and the fellow that does the, uh, well, it's a small, small little company. I even have my own dedicated clean room. Actually, it's Lord Minion's dedicated room. It's his sign that hangs on the door um, in his factory outside of St. Louis. And all the beard care products are made in the clean room there. And that's where you guys get them from. I've been to both places. They're all friends of mine. And I'm just really happy that my business is able to support theirs and everything just is able to keep growing. And actually this year, over last year, I believe we did two and a half times the sales of last year. So definitely tremendous growth. It's really cool. And thank you guys. It's actually YouTube, even though that's not where most of my quote following is. Um, YouTube is driving the most sales over any other platform. So thank you guys. It is just so cool. I love when animals cooperate for videos. Here they are just hanging out. Anyway, all that being said, I got to give you guys a tour of the living quarters, which I have now renamed to headquarters. And I don't know, I call it home and whatever else. So, but in the meantime, who doesn't want to watch happy animals? Good boys. You guys all good boys. You being good, Minion. You being so nice to the kitties. All right, let's go inside and check it all out. I know you guys really want to see the inside, and this is kind of the inside. This is the mudroom, and it's a very important part of this whole thing. Got a spot for dry firewood. Firewood out there is sort of wet, sort of dry. Kindling, miscellaneous wood stove tools. This is where we take on and off our shoes. Eventually there will be rugs and stuff, but the refrigerator is out here. It's a mini fridge. And then this is basically, we're running it as a freezer. The rest of the storage area is basically a disaster. We're going to rework some of it so it's more convenient. We can store stuff on shelves, but that's, you know, a future project. 
And here we are, the living quarters. Right after you get inside the door on the right is the kitchen. Not much special about it. It's a kitchen, it's kind of small. Laundry right here. Currently keeping the coffee stuff on top of the washing machine. It's a washer dryer combo. I will have a review probably as a short coming out on this eventually. Shower cabinet for bathroom stuff, shower stuff. This is a dining room table that folds up real small, but it's got a leaf on one side and a leaf on the other side. Folds out to 60 inches, which is really cool because right over here we can set it, turn our chairs, and basically eat at a table. The center point of most off-grid homesteads is a wood stove, and this is no exception. This is right in the center of everything. The water heater's here. This is obviously where we cook, and this heats the place up. Water heater is very, very simple. It's just a coil of copper. This water gets hot in this kettle and it doesn't ever get beyond boiling. Never actually had it to boiling. It also humidifies the room because we're running a wood stove. And once we hit around 120 or anything above that, it's able to heat our water. Cold goes in here. This water heats the water in a pipe. Out it goes here down below the floor, and then it makes hot water for the shower, sink, and the washer if we want it. Over here is the office, the big giant TV. Can't forget about the Death Star light. It's an Ikea light that was painted by an artist to be a Death Star, super cool. My chair is the Batman chair. Jen's office is on this side. We've got pictures and stuff to hang. Robot vacuum that I'm testing out. So far it seems to be doing good, but it's early on. And over here is the bedroom. We've got the two armoires. One's mine, one's Jen's. And we've got a king-size bed stuffed in here. Super cool. Lots of little details to finish up in here. In between the bed and the wall, I'm going to put a shelf with built-in chargers so we can charge phones and stuff. Also all along the head of the bed. And I might even put some little shelf up there on top for decorations or something. And I cannot forget about this speaker. There's actually two of them. I gotta rework all this wiring. It's all a complete mess, but that goes to the outside so I can hear all the outside noises through the insulated wall. If the dogs bark, if the ducks are quacking, I get to know about it. Right, Minion? You get to know about it. And of course we have the back deck with a sweet view in the wintertime. In the summertime, it's just simply going to be leaves, but that's a good view too. And over there is the water tank where all of the water for the homestead is provided. In case you guys are still having a hard time visualizing the layout of the living quarters, I've pretty much drawn it here below. Here's the office. Here's the mudroom. Firewood pile. Refrigerator. Freezer. Kitchen sink. Shower. Bathroom accessories. Table. And, of course, the bed. And for those of you thinking I forgot about Jen and Charlo, no, I did not. And they are definitely new additions to the homestead as of December. And of course, we're not going to forget Spoot, the jumping spider, who was found in here in early to mid-November, hanging out under the wood stove, and she gets to live in here. And she's gotten a bunch of cool new decorations. Hope you guys enjoy following along on the homestead. I appreciate you guys hitting that subscribe button, getting us to 1 million subs. We're beyond that now. But anyway, thank you for watching, and hope you continue watching all the shorts and hopefully more long-format videos in the future.